Good evening and welcome. My name is Jerry McDermott. I'm the Media and Communications Manager here at Fingal County Council. And welcome to our fourth and final webinar, which is part of our consultation process that is going to play an important part in the creation of the Fingal Development Plan for 2023 to 2029. In our first three webinars, we've discussed people and place, heritage and green infrastructure, and employment and economy. Tonight, we'll be examining connectivity and climate action. Last month, the development plan process began with the publication of a strategic issues paper. The purpose of this document is to stimulate debate and generate feedback from the public and stakeholders on what they th think we should be doing to make Fingal a great place to live, work, visit and do business in. This is the start of a two year process that will end in March 2023 with the adoption of the six year development plan by the elected members of Fingal County Council. Along the way, there will be three opportunities for the public and stakeholders to participate mm -hmm. in the development plan process. We are in the first of those consultation periods at the moment, and we are now taking submissions on the strategic issues paper. The deadline for receipt of submissions is May the 12th, and submissions can be uploaded onto the Fingal County Council consultation portal, which can be found at www.consult.fingal.ie. If you are making a submission, please remember two things. It should be strategic in nature and it should not be a zoning request as zoning requests will not be considered at this time. Further information on the development plan process is also available on our website, which is fingal.ie forward slash development plan. The strategic issues paper contains seven key themes ranging from people and place through to infrastructure and utilities. The purpose of these webinars is to give you some background into the issues and an opportunity to pose questions about them. Tonight, as I've already said, we will be discussing connectivity and climate action, two very important subjects for the people of Fingal. We will have two presentations followed by a question and answer session. And if you want to ask a question or make a comment, please use the Q&A facility, which you should find in the top right hand corner of your screen. Now, just moving to uh, to connectivity and the ease at which people move around impacts positively on our quality of life and boosts the attractiveness of Fingal as a place to live, work and visit. Similarly, the ease at which goods can be moved from place to place is vital to an efficient and vibrant economy. Providing well serviced, well connected towns, villages and communities is the key is a key aim of Fingal County Council. Since the adoption of the current development plan in 2017, Fingal County Council has actively sought to advance more sustainable and environmentally focused growth and mobility within the county. A number of initiatives are progressing across the county with the aim of improving the public realm and promoting sustainable travel options. Urban roads and streets within new and developing areas are being designed and constructed to facilitate increased levels of walking and cycling. Over the past year, substantial temporary measures have been put in place to expand the public realm and allocate more space for pedestrians and cyclists in response to COVID-19. Fingal County Council's three year capital program 2021 to 2023 allocates significant investment to transportation projects within the county, which will facilitate cyclists, pedestrians and bus movement and improve traffic flows generally. The recent establishment by Fingal County Council of the Environment, Climate Action and Active Travel Department demonstrates its commitment to advancing a network of walking and cycling routes central to enhancing the quality of residents and visitors alike. Fingal, in case you didn't know it, was the first local authority in Ireland to launch a mobility hub to support accessible and sustainable travel in Blanchardstown in 2020. And this encourages varied and sustainable types of transport in areas close to existing public transport links with high concentrations of employment, housing, shopping, amenities and recreation. We'll hear a lot more about connectivity in a few moments. Climate change refers to the significant change in the average temperature over a period of time. The effects of climate change have become increasingly evident since the early 1990s and are a direct result of the emission of ga greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, primarily from human activities. Climate action must be a central theme and an ever present factor and principle throughout the next development plan. So we ask the question, how do we build low carbon communities and economies? 
The next development plan will play an important role through the implementation of its policies and objectives to help address mitigation and adaptation requirements and move towards a low carbon resilient county. Fingal County Council adopted the Fingal County uh, Climate Change Action Plan in 2029 and that further demonstrates Fingal County Council's commitment to transitioning to a low carbon society and economy. The Climate Change Action Plan features a range of actions across five key areas and we'll hear about them shortly. Tonight we have four guests with us. Roisin Burke is a uh, senior planner with Fingal County Council and is overseeing the development plan process. Paul Carroll is the senior engineer in the planning and strategic infrastructure department with responsibility for transport planning and strategic transport projects. Paul will talk about connectivity and its importance whether it's for going to school or the shops or industry moving around the county. He'll talk about the region, uh, uh, also how, how it impacts on the region and also on the country. He will talk about the Fingal approach to this and the requirement for good policy in order to have good connectivity. Ronan O'Reilly is the Climate Action Coordinator for Fingal and Ronan will talk about climate action, the National Climate Change Adaptation Framework and how the Fingal Climate Change Action Plan is being implemented. And David Storey is the Director of Environment, Climate Action and Active Travel and he will join us after the presentations to take questions on both connectivity and climate action. Questions to David, Roisin, Paul and Ronan can be typed into the Q&A box and as many as possible will be facilitated. Those that are not answered will still be considered in the consultation process. And if we do have any technical issues between now and eight o'clock, do bear with us and we will endeavor to resolve them as they, as they arise. So before we go to tonight's presentations, I'd like to invite our senior planner, Roisin Burke, to formally welcome you to tonight's event. Roisin. Thanks for that, Jerry. I want to begin by thanking you all for taking the time to be here this evening. We at Fingal appreciate you taking the time to participate in this process, particularly on such a fine evening. This is your county and Fingal County Council wants everyone, whether that's a youth group, older citizens, businesses, local residents, organisations or community groups to have your say on the county's future. As Jerry outlined, this is the first stage in preparing the new Fingal development plan for 2023 to 2029. And the preparation of a new development plan to guide the county's future development is one of the most one of the most important functions of the County Council. The plan will set out a shared vision to guide future development for the benefit of Fingal and all its citizens. And this consultation has come at a challenging, challenging time arising from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, Brexit and climate change. The next Fingal development plan offers an opportunity to respond to these challenges and to build on the success of the significant investment and in regeneration seen over the period of the current plan. The Council is committed to ensuring the efficient use of Fingal's land to deliver additional housing, integrated transport, community infrastructure and facilities, cultural and sports development, as well as sustainable economic growth. This webinar is focused on the themes of connectivity and climate action, and the purpose is to provide you with an overview of the theme, to hear about it, to ask questions and gather more information before you have your say and make your submission. The policy approach within the county over the last two decades has been to integrate land use and transportation and to encourage a shift from private car use to walk and cycling and public transport. Policy has increasingly focused on the health and social benefits of active travel and the role that high quality public realm plays in encouraging walking and cycling. A priority for the next development plan will be the promotion of more effective and sustainable travel options, while not forgetting about the requirement to ensure the efficient movement of goods and industry and the private car across and through the county. The next development plan also has an important role to play in helping Ireland realise its potential to be a low carbon society and mitigating the impacts of climate change. In terms of climate change and land use planning, the development plan plays an important role by guiding the sustainable growth of the county, encouraging more compact mixed use development and greater use of sustainable transport options such as cycling, walking and public transport restricting development in areas that are at risk of flooding or coastal erosion and protecting the natural landscape and biodiversity. 
We at Fingal are committed to ensuring the transition to a climate resilient and low carbon county and addressing climate action will be a core underpinning theme of the forthcoming development plan. Thank you again for taking the time to join us this evening and I'll pass you back to Jerry now for the presentations. Thank you, Roisin. So uh, as Roisin said, it's time to go for our first presentation and this comes from Paul Carroll who is going to look at the whole area of connectivity within Fingal. Paul. Hello, my name is Paul Carroll and I'm the Senior Engineer in the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department in Fingal County Council with responsibility for transportation planning and strategic transportation projects. I'm going to talk tonight about team three of the Fingal Development Plans, which is the connectivity and movement chapter. So the development plan is the key policy document that will guide the development of Fingal. And at this stage, we want to consider with the input from the public and other stakeholders, what are the key issues that the plan should seek to address for the period 2023 to 2029. The overall objective of the plan is to ensure the sustainable development of the county. And in terms of transportation, um, specifically, the overriding objective is that there's a seamless integration between land use and planning, land use planning and transportation planning, so that everything that happens in land use terms is consistent and complementary to the transportation policies and the transportation infrastructure of the county. So examples of what we're seeing happen internationally um, include the concept of, for example, the 15 minute city where urban areas are seeking to develop in such a way that citizens have access the vast majority of their needs within a, fixed, a 15 minute uh, travel time. And all the benefits that brings in terms of quality of life and health, uh, social interaction. Secondly, climate change will be a key consideration of the upcoming plan. And everything that happens in transportation terms will be geared towards ensuring carbon emissions are minimized. And this by its nature means that priority will have to be given to active and sustainable modes like public transport, walking and cycling. And all of that is, is in line with national objectives also. Whilst a lot of attention and priority is given to sustainable and active travel modes, the plan also needs to reflect the fact that the movement of goods and freight and the movement of private cars will still remain key considerations as they can often not be accommodated outside of those traditional uh, vehicular modes. So transportation policies can be developed to complement and facilitate urban and public realm improvements. So rather than setting out uh, pure, to design purely functional road corridors, for example, the development plan should seek to ensure best practice is adopted for active travel measures and to ensure opportunities for public realm improvements are realized, such as landscaping and sustainable drainage features, uh, measures for improved air quality, for example, and all of those type of things are incorporated into transportation infrastructure to the maximum extent. So whether that's a road upgrade or a new road or junction, new traffic calming measures, a greenway, a new bridge or a new section of footpath. Fingal is very fortunate to have a number of strategic transportation corridors and the plan should seek to protect and enhance those facilities in terms of, for example, the national motorway network, um, access to Dublin port via the Dublin tunnel, and of course, and crucially for Fingal, access to Dublin Airport and the international connectivity that that brings to Fingal and to Ireland as a whole. Fingal is also very fortunate to have a rural hinterland, a large rural hinterland, and a key aspect of the plan should be to maintain strong accessibility between that hinterland and the various urban centres that are dotted across the county. So what context are we operating in? We work with the National Development Plan, with the Regional and Spatial and Economic Strategy, National Planning Framework, and of course the previous Fingal Development Plan, amongst other national and regional strategies. Fingal itself has many opportunities, and it's important to be conscious of the particular conditions that prevail in the county. For example, we have the youngest. Um, population demographic of any county in Ireland and one of the youngest in Europe in fact. So is there particular implications of that and how we plan our county and plan how we get around, around because of that young population. Similarly, there's also a really good perception of quality of life from Fingal citizens. So the county, so as the county develops, we need to be conscious that we don't 
do anything that has the potential to undermine that as quality of life is such a key factor in influencing the economic and social vitality of the county in attracting visitors and investment and ensuring a healthy and happy population. So the movement and connectivity of people within the county is a key factor in feeding into that quality of life for everyone. In real terms, when it comes to movement, connectivity and transportation, <clears throat> what is the function of the development plan in practical terms for me? In my role within the planning and strategic infrastructure department i see it roughly falling between these three broad headings and all of these are obviously guided and informed by the overall policy objectives and vision set out in the development plan so in no particular order the first of these would be to facilitate development by other public agencies secondly to facilitate guide and control private development and thirdly to deliver development directly um, and all of these should support the development uh, sustainable development of the county. So in terms of facilitating other public agencies, by that I mean that the, the county development plan should aim to be consistent with the wider regional and national objectives of bodies like the National Transport Authority, Irish Rail and Transport Infrastructure Ireland, for example. And that will ultimately lead to the delivery of strategic public transport uh, interventions such as Metrolink, DART Plus, expansion program, Bus Connects program. All three of those are game changers for Fingal, in particular along the airport corridor, along the coastal rail corridor and along the Maynooth rail corridor. And there are a range of other measures underway, including the Greater Dublin Area Cycle Network, Lewis Finglas and strategic parking rides. In terms of controlling, guiding private development, the development plan is, is the key tool that we use to ensure that developments are undertaken in line with best practice. As an example, the plan would seek to only permit higher quality design solutions like the image on the right, for example, which is a more attractive and pleasant place to live compared to car dominated developments like the image on the left. And then thirdly, and this is probably what occupies most of my time, um, is the delivery of infrastructure directly by Fingal County Council to facilitate that improved movement and improved connectivity. In real terms, the delivery of that new infrastructure um, that's provided by Fingal County Council is contained in the three-year capital program. And essentially that's a list of all the projects that will be actively developed by the council and the associated funding allocation for each project. So this is an extract from the transportation section of the program covering 2021 to 2023. And basically the only way that a project gets to this stage where it makes it onto this list of projects is if it starts out life as a policy objective of the development plan. So just to run through a few of the current projects that make the capital plan. The Fingal Coastal Way is a key greenway scheme for us. We're currently out at non statutory consultation on route options for that project, linking Donna Bait in the south all the way up along the coast up to the county boundary of Meath. Really going to enhance the quality of life for citizens along the route as well as visitors and really showcase the fantastic scenery and, and coastline of Fingal and provide a really safe, direct and convenient, sustainable transport route for people to walk and cycle as well as people to walk their dogs and, and go jogging and exercising and walk. In the west of the county we have the Royal Canal uh, Greenway which is due out on non-statutory consultation later this year also and then other greenways. Um, we have the recently opened Bell Oil to Port Marnock Greenway. We have a, a the Sutton to Malahide Greenway, which is due to go to non statutory consultation again later this year, and then the Broadmeadow Way Greenway from Malahide to Donabate received planning permission last year and have gone through the, the design process. We have a range of other schemes which are being developed to deliver sustainable transport infrastructure and also to um, free up housing and, and underpin housing development in the area. Um, the Hole in the Wall Road, for example, um, Donabate, uh, Don and Bells Oil. It's currently on site. And then we recently had the Rathbill Road in Swords and the Donabate Distributor Road, both funded by the LIHAF funding, which is underpinning residential development and open up new residential lands. 
the recently created active travel department within Fingal County Council has a large program of uh, protected cycle lanes, which are currently rolling out across the county. And they're also working on uh, an ambitious program of school streets and safer routes to school, which will be a key area of growth over the next uh, period of the development plan. Alongside that, across the county, there's behavioural change programmes underway and promotion of sustainable transport modes like bike sharing and road safety initiatives. All with a view to encouraging and promoting active and sustainable transport modes for both environmental and health benefits across the county. What, what are the future trends and challenges and opportunities that are going to be dealt with by the new development plan? We'll be seeing examples, more examples of urban living, such as these images from Dunleary Right Down, which were implemented during the COVID um, lockdown. What are the implications of things like car sharing clothes, for example, and um, scooter sharing apps? And what sort of other challenges and opportunities are going to um, arise over the coming years? So in London, there's a lot of low traffic neighbourhoods which have been rolled out. In Ireland, we're already seeing a reduction in car ownership levels. What are the implications of that? All of our national and regional spatial planning is directed towards urban consolidations. So that means there's going to be more people living in living in our urban centres. What are the implications of that? We we all know about the need to reduce our own carbon emissions and the associated air quality implications of that. There's a huge uh, level of investment being delivered in cycling and walking. There's also a much greater realization of the importance of public realm. And finally, in terms of the overall design and delivery of, of that infrastructure, we'll keep striving to make sure all of that is safe and accessible for all from every age group and from every ability. So there's a range of questions there that we should be thinking about as we feed into the development plan. And hopefully that presentation gives you a flavour of some of the things that I think all county council are doing at the moment. So. Thank you for your attention and hopefully you can feed in and make a decision on that during the consultation period. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And uh, if you've got a question for Paul, please type it into the Q&A box and send it on to us. We plan to spend around 30 minutes answering your questions. And if your question doesn't feature, don't worry, it will be passed on to the development plan team for consideration. And Paul spoke there about the Fingal Coastal Way. And I'd just like to tell you that we are planning a couple of webinars in relation to the Fingal Coastal Way, which is out on non-statutory consultation at the moment. So do watch our uh, Fingal County Council social media channels and also our website, fingal.ie for details in the coming days. Now, let's go to our second presentation. It's from Ronan O'Reilly, who is the Climate Action Coordinator for Fingal, and he's going to look at Climate Action, the National Climate Change Adaptation Framework, and how the Fingal Climate Change Action Plan is being implemented. Ronan. Hi, my name is Ronan O'Reilly. I'm the Climate Action Coordinator for Fingal County Council. I'll give a brief presentation of the Climate Action Team of Development Plan Review. I understand this will be the last presentation in the series, so climate action considerations will have been mentioned before now, as it's a cross-cutting team of the existing development plan and will be a central and cross-cutting team of the new development plan. So the development plan sets out the vision for the development of the county and the, ro the role of the development plan and land use planning is critical in moving to more climate resilient, low carbon society and an influence on a reduction in carbon emissions. The policy context has evolved since the existing plan was drafted. Climate action is now a high priority on the national agenda and uh, given the climate and biodiversity crisis we're facing. National and regional planning policy documents highlight the need to promote sustainable and compact growth to cater for population increases in sustainable ways. We've also had the All of Government Climate Action Plan 2019, and that plan sets out the national pathway 
to carbon neutrality by 2050 and has set national targets such as 70% of all electricity should be generated from renewable sources by 2030, 500,000 residential retrofits to B or B2 by 2030, and 1 million electric vehicles on Irish roads by 2030. And we've also had the Climate Action Bill in recent weeks, and that's put a requirement on local authorities to produce climate action plans this year and requires that local authority development plans will align with the climate action plans. Before Dublin, local authorities already have climate action plans in place. These were developed between 2017 and 2019 by internal cross-departmental teams from across the four local authorities, including planners, architects, engineers, park superintendents, biodiversity and heritage officers, scientists and environmental awareness officers, working with councillors and strategic policy committees. Our energy agency, Kodima, project managed uh, the development of the plans and provided technical input. And the CARO offices were formed in late 2018, and they are centres of expertise on climate action. Both CARO and Kodima provide ongoing support in the implementation of the plans. So the Fingal plan has four targets, a 33% improvement in council energy efficiency, a 40% reduction in council greenhouse gas emissions to make Fingal a more climate resilient region and to actively engage and inform citizens. And the plan includes both adaptation and mitigation actions. Adaptation actions are those which can reduce the impacts of climate change and mitigation actions are those which will reduce current and future greenhouse gas emissions. There's 130 actions in the plan across five teams, and it's been implemented across all Fingal departments over five years. So the sector is active on climate action, and the four Dublin local authorities have drafted one-year progress reports last October. And the Fingal report is available on the website. So I'll give some examples of actions across the five teams which are relevant to the development plan review. Under energy and buildings, those are actions around improving the energy efficiency in the built environment. Uh, they all produce annual energy reviews and the latest one reports that the council has made energy efficiency improvements of 34% to date since 2008. Um, across its own activities and the conversion of the public street light into LEDs is 70% complete and on course for completion this year and energy efficiency improvements have been made to uh, council social housing stock and there's new targets to bring all the stock to a B or B2 by 2030. Kadima, on behalf of the four Dublin local authorities are working on an energy master plan for the region uh, it's a spatially led plan with layers of data which will provide an evidence base for informing planning policy in relation to new development, transport and heat. Uh, the transport team includes actions around better integration of transport and land use planning, move to more sustainable modes of transport and improve connectivity. Uh, these include actions around engagement with the NTA and public transport provision, um, progression of a number of green rays and cycle routes under the capital programme, and also development and progression of various active travel initiatives. These have been covered in the connectivity and movement presentation. Um, the council is transitioning to an electric vehicle fleet with 34 fully electric road vehicles, um, and will support the, the, the rollout of the Dublin region public EV charger network. Under flood resilience, the coastal protection plan for Portran, Rush, and Rogers Town Outer Estuary has been progressed at present. Um, it's it's, it's, it's uh, progressing towards a, a planning uh, submission. Strategic flood risk assessments are, are being undertaken on an ongoing basis for all local area plans to ensure we don't build on any land likely to flood. Um, and 
a sustainable urban drainage policy document has been developed to inform new development within the county. It's, this promotes the use of, of green roofs and tree pits, promotes the use of, of above ground suds. The nature based solution team includes actions around restoring natural ecosystems, protecting and enhancing biodiversity, and the integration of green infrastructure. Uh, seven Fingal Parks received green flags of sustainable green spaces in 2020. Uh, a new tree strategy has been drafted and was out on public consultation last month, and a new biodiversity action plan is also being drafted. And 800 allotments are supported across the county also. Under resource management, uh, the council operates 60 brain centres and two recycling centres. Uh, drinking water fountains and recycling bins are being rolled out to all regional parks. Climate and environmental awareness programmes are underway. And uh, a guide to a sustainable business, Fingal, uh, has been produced, and there's a section on the website on that also. So, climate action considerations are increasingly being integrated into Fingal policy plans and services, and the development plan policies and objectives will be updated in this review, and all planning applications will be assessed against the new objectives. So, the development plan will play an important role. Uh, through the implementation of those policies and objectives uh, to move towards a low carbon climate resilient county. Uh, climate action must be a central and cross cutting team and the plan must influence a reduction in carbon emissions and the negative impacts of climate change by promoting compact urban growth, sustainable multimodal transport, the use of renewable energy sources, uh, as well as measures to enhance the resilience of the county through nature-based solutions and green infrastructure and also protect and enhance biodiversity. Um, the provision of well-serviced, well-connected neighbourhoods with an attractive walking and cycling environment may help encourage behavioural change to active travel and reduce car dependency, leading to better climate and environmental outcomes. So the details on how to make a submission on the plan are on the screen. Thank you. And thank you, Ronan. Uh, and don't forget, if you have any questions for Ronan or any of our panelists, please type them into the Q&A box and we'll try to get through as many of them as we can between now and eight o'clock. And it's good to see that there are plenty of questions coming in already. So let's switch on the microphones of all our panelists and go to our first question this evening. And it's for Paul Carroll. And uh, it's a question, Paul, on rural transport. And one of our viewers wants to know, how can rural transport accessibility be improved? Thanks, Jerry. Um, I suppose, yeah, as I, as I mentioned in the presentation, Fingal is, is, is very lucky. We have a we have a large and uh, fairly vibrant uh, rural hinterland, and it's a key point for the county. There's a good mix of urban and rural uh, areas across the county, and I suppose a lot of the work that we do is is focused on the urban centres. I suppose part of what we want to do in that work is to make sure that the the road network is um, the road network is fully accessible within those urban centres. So it's not for people who don't need to drive, who don't need to use the, the road network for short journeys, that they have alternative means, be that walking, cycling, or public transport. So that people coming in from further afield who have fewer options but to drive, that the road network is there for them and it's not overly congested. We also work quite closely with the NTA and with other bus service providers, things like local link and, and rural bus services to make sure that the county is well served and to plan with that with those organizations for particular parts of the county which are going to develop into future. So I suppose it's it's a it's a cross agency approach that we try to adopt to, to meet those needs. OK, thank you, Paul. Uh, Ronan, if I can turn to you now, uh, a question for you. What does a low carbon so uh, society look like? Thanks, Jerry. Um, I suppose at present we rely far too heavily on, on fossil fuels for most everything, for transport, heat and energy. Um, and at the same time, nationally, there's there's a huge resource there with 
wind energy and 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 solar energy um, so uh, a move to a low carbon society um, is is to take advantage of that re resource i suppose and it's it's set out in the in the government uh, the pathway there um, to try to um, electrify uh, in a large part uh, transport and heat and then make electricity greener uh, through the use of, of renewables, both offshore and onshore wind and uh, and solar PV in particular for the, the greening of the electricity. And then to electrify transport and heat, well, uh, the, the target, I suppose, is to have one, one million electric vehicles on the roads by 2030 and also a huge um, program for retrofitting heat pumps to houses uh, and 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 most new houses will have will will have heat pumps for heating as well. Uh, so so there are two large parts, and then the 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 public transport piece as well, uh, the the active travel, the funding which has been made available to local authorities and other agencies for the provision, public transport and active travel. Um, Carbon sequestration will be another piece, um, uh, planting planting more trees to, to sequester carbon. Um, and I suppose just the, the, the support of renewable energy generation um, from large scale to small scale for, for, for businesses and, and communities uh, for, for micro generation as well. So in terms of the development plan, then I suppose support for um, for support for renewables, support for electric vehicles, and all of the things that, that um, Paul Carroll has outlined there in the connectivity and movement uh, uh, piece with it, with the transport, transportation and the connectivity. Um, so that's what I would say. How, uh, Thank you. Thanks, Rona. Um, our next question, I think I'll pose it to both Roisin and, and Paul. Maybe Roisin, if you come in on it first and, and then Paul, you, you come in after Roisin. Um, the question is, how can we ensure improved coordination between land use and transportation infrastructure to achieve more sustainable development? Thanks for that, Jerry. I think what this question gets to is actually the core focus or the fundamental um, aspect of the development plan. That's exactly what we're seeking to do, to integrate the land use policies alongside the transportation policies. So where, for example, within Fingal and in Soares, we are now uh, preparing for Metrolink coming. We are zoning land accordingly to allow for increased uh, densities of development to ensure that when Metrolink comes, there's a threshold of population there that will make it competitive for use. And equally that when people come to live here, there'll be other facilities nearby as well, their shops, their services. And it goes back to something that Paul mentioned earlier in his presentation, that 15 minute city or that neighbourhood where everything is local, where you can get things that you need within a 15 minute walk or cycle of your home and that ties back then to the public transport corridors as well which allow for more compact development. Paul I don't know if you have anything to add there. Yeah I suppose that that's exactly that's exactly it I think the development plan is the key uh, the key driver for that and, and um, a real uh, objective that we want to achieve with that that integration I suppose at a at a, at a practical level um, I suppose Fingal County Council is, is really well set up in terms of how how the departmental structure is set up in terms of the planning and strategic infrastructure department has that expertise across both planning and transportation and those those disciplines work very well together and very closely and um, we also adopt a very strong multi-agency approach as i mentioned earlier between both ourselves and the other transportation agencies across across the, the county and across the region and i suppose finally we do our best to do things like this and and other you know Jerry mentioned the Fingal Coast away earlier on to get that um, as much of an active and really uh, constructive engagement with uh, both stakeholders and general public and elected members and a wide variety of people so, so that we do have that um, really multidisciplinary view um, of, of how to achieve um, that integration. OK, thank you, Paul. I'm delighted we've been joined by David Storey, who is the director of um, our Environment, Climate Action and uh, Active Travel Department, um, a, a newly created department. And 
David, there's a question in here, and I, I think you'd be a good man to, to answer it. Uh, just give me, I, I've actually lost my, my question, but one, one question I have that, that, that is here for you is um, the School Streets Initiative um, and school zones. I know you've been heavily involved in the past. What exactly is it? Yeah, Jerry, um, thanks for that. Uh, Fingal County Council introduced the School Streets Initiative in Malahide, and it's, it was run on a pilot basis and was basically creating a safe zone outside a, a school um, and obviously reducing the car dependency or re reducing the car dependency for parents dropping their children right directly outside the school. So you have a non-trafficked area for 150 metres outside the school in Malahide. And what we do then is we've provided another a number of drop off zones a number of minutes away where you're uh, actively encouraging the parents um, to bring these kids to these uh, car parks and then walk their children to these schools instead of actually obviously uh, bring the car right outside um, the school and Grove Road in Malahide. Uh, it's been very successful and we had a lot of challenges introducing it and residents were very skeptical about the, the project. But um, it's been very successful and what's happening now is as part of our active travel measures across the county, we're now looking to see can we introduce school streets and school zones uh, outside all the schools in Fingal and we've appointed a consultant to make an assessment on the requirements for all the schools in Fingal. So hopefully we'll have something that will um, be able to provide um, to our SPC to review a document to review and then obviously it will uh, link in with the objectives within the development plan about active travel. And I, I found a question that um, disappeared off my screen, David. So if you just stay there and then Paul and Roshi might want to come in on this uh, after you finish. But one of our viewers wants to know, how do we increase walking, cycling and public transport use and reduce car dependency? Um, in fairness to Paul, I think he's outlined, Fingal has a very ambitious programme over the next number of years for the provision of safe infrastructure, cycling and walking infrastructure. And obviously we have a number of objectives within the development plan. Our capital plan, I think, has outlined, I think it's in excess of 200 million uh, between coastal routes, NTA fund and, and local connection routes, school routes at Fingal um, will provide over the next number of years. And with the rollout of that infrastructure, and uh, the policies that we introduce as part of the development plan. That's how we obviously then create the environment for people to change from the car to use of uh, better, better cycle infrastructure and better walking infrastructure and mostly safe infrastructure across the county. I think Paul and Sinead might want to come in as well. Paul? Yeah, yeah Dave, um, that's exactly it. I think we have it. We have a really ambitious plan and I suppose a lot of what we're doing now involves um, looking at already developed areas and um, retrofitting, you know, those measures that may not have been put in back in the 60s, 70s, 80s when, when these roads were built. So it's putting in uh, safer walking routes, safer cycling routes, uh, safer junctions and giving people the option um, to, to make that choice, you know, and what has been found, I think, in Ireland and internationally is that, is that if people do have those options, they're only too keen to, to, to make that choice, and to make the change, the sustainable change, and to, to get out of their cars when, when high quality infrastructure is provided. So that's, that's the key, key driver behind everything that we're doing in the development plan and everything that falls out of the plan, including the, the measures in the capital programme that I, that I mentioned earlier. Thanks, Paul. And Roisin, do you have anything to add to that? I suppose, Sherry, just, you know, the underlying requirement is, you know, where we have a design and layout of a development that's been aimed to create pleasant spaces and streets that are attractive to pedestrian and cyclists, then that's what people will do. So it's to deprioritise the car and make it more attractive for people to walk and cycle, to give them a real uh, choice. And that's what we'd be aiming to do through the policies of the development plan. Thank you. Uh, Ronan, if I can come back to you. Um, agriculture and agri-food are very important to Fingal's economy. How can the development plan help these industries with climate action? Um, Ronan, if you just switch on your microphone, I think it just went off there. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Jerry. Um, it, it's a good question and one we'd like to receive some submissions on. 
Um, I suppose the, the agri-food sector uh, is experiencing challenges with, with, with climate change already and, and, and will do in years to come uh, as we get drier summers and, and wetter winters and an increase in temperature in general uh, is, is putting stress on certain food crops and, and food production. So um, market gardeners and farmers may need to diversify um, uh, in time, um, but I suppose uh, it, it's an area where we'd be eager to um, to see in what capacity the local authority can assist in with adaptation measures. The the sectors will be producing adaptation plans themselves, uh, and there'll be a huge focus there from the likes of Chagisk and the IFA and academia um, uh, on on food production. Um, so, so there will be adaptation plans there. Um, I suppose for, that's the adaptation side. I suppose what we can do to help to help farmers is to, you know, through the development plan, support for market um, for for uh, farmers markets and 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 the likes to 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 get fresh produce to to communities in a way that people can reduce their carbon footprint, and that's all beneficial. But how we can how we can uh, assist farmers adapt is something we'd be very open to. In terms of the mitigation side, then I suppose it's 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 mainly down to um, encouraging uh, more more tree planting on on marginal land, um, and reduced use of fertilisers, um, and increased provision I suppose of agricultural land for for renewables such as um, solar PV. Um, yeah, and, and Ronan, is, is the council uh, looking at developing any renewable energy projects? Uh, yeah, um, we are. Uh, uh, Bileli Landfill, for example, um, uh, we're looking at putting a, a, a large uh, solar PV array on, on, on the former landfill, which is now a regional park in transition. Um, so for anybody who hasn't seen it, there's a video on the uh, on the website on the environmental page there of the the, the jogging uh, and walking uh, links around the 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 old land landfill with with fantastic views of Rogerstown Estuary etc. But the so there's pl plans for a, a solar array there. It'll obviously be subject to a feasibility study. Uh, an environmental assessment and also agreement by uh, the EPA because it would be a, a change of use. But if it is feasible, it would be it would be a good site because a lot of the infrastructure is already in place in terms of access and and site roads and so on and so forth. And we're already um, uh, producing electricity on site there and um, uh, extracting the, the 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 gas from the landfill, so that would be a, that would be a good one if it can come to fruition. Uh, as well as that, then we're looking at um, uh, PV on suitable local authority roofs, um, such as libraries and and depots. Uh, they're being assessed at present, um, just to see if they'd be suitable. If they could take the panels, um, so hopefully we'll see a few of those go in this year. Also looking at other land banks that the council has that wouldn't be suitable for housing or, 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 or for other development, uh, potentially for, for PV over the years to come. Uh, and as well as that, then Kadima, um, uh, on behalf of the four Dublin local authorities would be looking at uh, district heating and uh, uh, large scale um, renewables uh, um, Incorporating into the into the energy master plan that was mentioned in the presentation there, uh, and I, I suppose so. I suppose those are the projects we're looking at ourselves, and then general support for renewables through the the policy objectives of, of the plan. Thanks, Ronan. Um, our next question, I think Ronan mentioned it in his presentation that climate action uh, sort of crosses into every theme that we have within the development plan, and um, this one certainly crosses into connectivity and climate action. So I'll, I'll ask it to David. Um, what are the plans for the provision of EV charge points in our towns and villages? Thanks, Jerry. Um, over the last uh, 15 months or so, the four Dublin local authorities with the Climate Action Office and Smart Dublin have come together and we've engaged consultants to carry out a report in relation to the requirements 
uh, for the provision of rollout of EV infrastructure. So we're at final draft stage actually of that report uh, and we'll be engaging with the Department of Transport in relation to that report um, and that will outline the different models that uh, might be sustainable within the Dublin region. So you'll be talking about maybe the provision of hubs for um, a number of EV chargers together and then uh, a number of char on street chargers. So we're in the final, uh, I suppose, final uh, getting the information together, finalising the report and looking for sign off from the Department of Transport. So we hope to have that issued over the next number of months. OK, thanks, Dave. Um, Paul, um, another one for you. Um, it's in, in relation to um, the radial network and uh, a viewer here wanting to know, is the council um, or what are the council's plans for a radial network? OK, um, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Like, I, I think probably they're looking to see how can the development plan provide a better radial network? Yeah, OK, and by radial network, I presume they mean, do they mean an orbital network? <laughs> I, <laughs> mean, I'm not sure, I suppose. Yeah. I think um, all the query is in relation to moving across the county. Because yeah, OK, so it's, it's public transport is in and yeah, out of town yeah, rather yeah. than that's that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. orbital, orbital. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose just when we talk about radial, I suppose in terms of Dublin transport, especially it's Dublin city centre out, you know, like the spokes of wheel, and then orbital is kind of the more around around the the outside. And I think that's I, I suspect that that's what was meant. All mm -hmm. right. So, for example, how how do we connect say Blanchardstown with with the uh, you know the areas of Fingal that are in, near Finglas with with Swords, for example, with the airport mm -hmm. and um, I suppose that is a real challenge for us traditionally, you know, the, the kind of distances that are involved, you're not going to really get um, particularly uh, high uptake of people cycling and walking, those kind of distances. But what we do have, I suppose, a lot of people use the M50, but what, what we want to get to is a more integrated um, transport network where you have, you might have to do one or two interchanges, but that along the along the way to make those to make those um, journeys possible. But I suppose between the Dart expansion, which is going to be providing a really high frequency, high quality service on the um, the Belfast line and the Minute line, and um, we'll have the Lewis going to Finglas, um, which will interchange with the Minute line. We'll have the Metrolink going to Swords um, and all of those um, all of those gaps in between that then will be serviced by um, the Bus Connects network, which is really heavily focused on those orbital routes as well. So I think you know it's 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 it is a slow enough process to deliver those kind of projects and deliver those kind of step change um, pieces of infrastructure. But you know you would hope this time five, six, seven years from now, a lot of those will be well advanced. Some of them will be operating Bus Connects network reorganisation in particular, and all of those multimodal um, facilities will be much more available and will provide a much more coherent um, network to cater for exactly those kind of those kind of trips that aren't necessarily um, particularly well catered for at the moment. And as I mentioned in the presentation, I suppose that the, the development plan is key in that in terms of working with the other agencies and in terms of delivering our own um, infrastructure to underpin all of that um, all of that um, wider plan for the, for the transport network. And if you just stay there, Paul, um, just one more question here. There has been a significant growth in the use of cargo bikes, and one of our viewers wants to know, will the development plan provide and promote parking facilities to cater for these? And, and maybe Dave, you might come in on it afterwards. Yeah, I suppose that that's exactly it. There's, there's, there's a whole range of different transport options, and we talk about in transport terms, we talk about the last mile sometimes in terms of some people make make those shorter trips on on scooters, on e-scooters, on e-bikes, on, on traditional bikes, on cargo bikes. You know, there's, there's a whole range of different modes of transport that even three, four or five years ago, they weren't, you know, they weren't hardly seen on the roads, whereas now it's it's not uncommon to see people zipping around on, on e-bikes and e-scooters and, e and cargo bikes. So the challenge for us is to make sure that the plan um, fully fully encourages those those modes because they're definitely 
going to be playing a key part of the overall transport um, provision across Fingo well into the future. And Dave, any thoughts? Yeah, Jerry. Um, as part of the active travel unit that's set up, we will be doing an active travel strategy, and um, that will obviously link in with the development plan and Roisin's team, and all those issues around micro mobility, and um, will be taken into account. So we'll be looking at, as Paul has said there, all those different modes of transport from scooters. When hopefully the legislation is changed, and then the provision of e-bikes and the provision of cargo bikes. So they're all things that will have to be looked at and obviously be allowed for in the provision of the infrastructure. Right, um, thanks Dave. Well, we're almost out of time. Um, so I just uh, look to Roisin uh, as our senior planner here. And, uh, you know, we've come to the end of our webinars. This, this is our fourth and, and final webinar. And I suppose the obvious question is, what happens next uh, once these webinars are, are completed in terms of the development plan? It's our hope that everyone here and everyone listening in or uh, watching back at another time will log on to the website and share their views before the 12th of May. As we've all mentioned previously, this is the first of three opportunities for the public to feed into the development plan process and the next stage will be the publication of the draft plan in February of next year. For now, the strategic issues paper and other information are available on our website at fingal.ie forward slash development plan and we welcome all submissions. And I suppose just so that people are aware, a submission doesn't need to be a long report. It can simply be about, can simply be your ideas on how the county can be improved in the future. And I just noticed the questions coming in this evening, some of them are very localised about uh, connections between estates, connections through schools and things like that. And for us, it's important that you tell us about your community, what, work, what works well, what's missing, where are those missing connections and how we can make Fingal better and developed, well serviced, well connected towns, villages and communities. And we look forward to hearing all your comments and views. So thanks everyone for coming along. Thank you, Roisin. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, if your question hasn't been answered, don't worry. It will be forwarded on to the development plan team and it will be considered as part of the preparations for the draft development plan. Thank you to everybody who did submit questions or comments and thank you all for logging in. I do hope you've enjoyed our webinars and you can view the recordings of this and the other three webinars at www.fingal.ie forward slash development plan. And as Roshin says, don't forget that you can make a submission to the development plan at consult.fingal.ie up until May the 12th. My thanks to Roshin Burke, Paul Carroll, Ronan O'Reilly and David Storey for joining us this evening and providing us with plenty to consider in relation to connectivity and climate action. Hopefully what they had will help you to uh, in preparing your submission. As this is our last webinar, I want to thank our production team for all their efforts over the past fortnight. They certainly did make sure that it would be all right on the night. And that's it for myself and everybody at Fingal County Council. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and stay safe.